It was a cold, dark, and stormy night when Bishyanand had the whole fate of humanity in his hands, playing a game against the computer overlords to determine who would rule this earth, the machines or the humans. And as we will see, there is a big surprise coming at the end about the real identity of this pseudonym and his computer playing here. All will be revealed soon. Illingworth Chess, the best to improve your chess. What's up guys, GM Max, and in this video we're going to see an incredible game. Absolutely shocking on so many levels. We have Vichy Anand playing against the computer, and his computer had an amazing sense of humour, because this is what the computer did. After the move knight to f3, it fought, what's the worst legal move on the board that I can play? You know, I'm thinking that if I just play like my normal engine move, like bam 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 every time, it's too easy. Let's make this a fair fight. And so the computer <clears throat> played the move of pawn to e5. An incredible gambit against the ready. I mean, I thought the Stafford gambit was rubbish, but man, this is like a whole new level of garbage here. I mean, I guess after knight 5 maybe you could still go knight c6 and say, Oh, I played the Accelerate Stafford. I am such a genius. I incorporate the Stafford in every single game, even when they don't play 1e4. But instead, the computer said, oh, I've still got a few more bad moves in me. You know, don't count me out just yet. And he played the move d6, hitting a knight. Now, I get this all the time in Fog of War chess. Fog of War chess, where you can't see the pieces in front of you. So, for example, you would only be able to see, like, these squares and, you know, these squares. Uh, you know, you get there, you can able to see all these squares and only all of these squares. That's if it was Fog of War chess. This is all you would be able to see. And so what I would do is if it was Fog of War, I would just go C4, Queen A4 and take the king. But because Black, well, is able to see the pieces and actually has to deal with a check, we can't really just go for a four-move checkmate against this computer like someone did it about a week ago. So let's see what happened in the game. Black played Knight to C6. Well, at least he knows to, <clears throat> to develop his pieces. I mean, the computer, I mean, I thought it was going to, like, do some rover or something just to try to troll and say, yeah, you're such a lot... Uh, you know, a weak player that you're going to like, you know, I can play h5 and still beat you. But the computer you know, rightly shows some respect for Vichy Anand. Remember that back in the old days, Vichy Anand, like, that he had this big team of seconds, and what he'd do is, like, they'd all get together around the computer, the com oh, rather than seconds at the computer, they'd be there, like, you know, checking, Anand would be on the other side of the board, and the seconds like, whoa, what is this? Anand just out-calculated my computer, it saw further than my machine, and now I'm going to lose! What is this? How is a human so much better than the top computers dominating the world chess scene? Well, that's a genius of Vichy Anand for you. And if you want to be able to outsmart the computer as well, smash that like button and also comment below with your, what you feel about chess computers. So after 96, White took the center with d4. I mean, it would have been better to play it on move one, but better late than never, right? <clears throat> we had to move knight to f6. White went boom, d5. Let's kick that horsey around. You know, you could also play c4. Play Queen's Gambit, Knight C3, E4, and you know, channel your inner Beth Harmon. But instead, we had to move D5. Black played Knight E5, putting that Knight in the center. As around this point, the Black the computer eyes, oh, I can't just play beginner moves anymore. If I do that, I'm going to lose the game because Anand is just too strong to give not just pawn odds, but also like queen odds to as well. So now Black said, okay, serious game face, does not compute, bad move, let's play. We had to move Bishop to E7, preparing the castling. Why played e4 to take that juicy center. <clears throat> and after castles, Anand again played a very good move, bishop to e2. Game so amazing already, losing my voice in total shock over the game. Why played c6, trying to get a little attack on the pawn. And now at this point, I think if I'd been white, I would have considered a move like d takes c6. Why? Well, the reason is that we want to split that pawn chain into up in a four, in a three different pawn islands. We got one, two, three. That means that when we do get to the end game, we'll be able to use our special Grandmaster technique to take those weaknesses and win the game. But okay, Castles, you know, keeps the king safe. And remember, this was a simultaneous exhibition where Anand was taking a lot of different computers at once, saying, you know what? One computer is just not enough. Like, I'm going to take on a lot of machines and those operate as well. They're not going to know what's here, what hit them. So remember, Anand's great chess player, past world chess champion. We've got to pay respects to him. So now after castles, we had c takes d5. e takes d5 was played, because knight takes d5, he's nervous about hanging that pawn with knight takes e4. And after e takes d5, you would think that, okay, after a6, like black, 
He's trying to play the knight off, but he doesn't have... Didn't manage to put the pawn on c5. So that's kind of Rhaegon kind of wrong for black at this point. A pawn down knight off. And, but it turns out, even though the rain is coming down, it's actually not going to come down on the computer, believe it or not. I mean, did you really think that, you know, the computer was going to lose game after game after game to the humans? Well, we'll find out if it's the case. So we had the move rook to e1, putting that rook on a nice open file. Very good play. You could also play Bishbef 4 if you want to try to induce black to take that knight. Uh, remember, like, the Russians just say the take is a mistake, but it's not really the case here. But still nice to you know, get those bishops on those open diagonals, pile up the pressure on d6, and, you know, we're just laughing at this point. Because black's down a pawn, and he lacks space at the same time. Well, the game went rook to e1, and I think that around this point, Fisher was probably thinking, oh, yeah, I'm just playing like some beginner. He blundered the pawn, and, yeah, now trying to develop a piece, is trying to backtrack. But you know, it turned out there was a little surprise in store. Well, I played him with a3. And what's the idea of a3? Well, it's just to stop b4 and to deal with any pressure against that d5 pawn. So, very smart prophylaxis by Vishyanand. Black played h6, again saying, Well, okay, if you're going to play a6, I'm going to play my rook's pawn as well, because that makes me look like a grandmaster. So, right now, I play the move knight d4, and mm, yeah, knight d4, perfectly fine, but if I was white, I think I would want him to take me. <clears throat> so, I play the move bishop f4. And if they do bring the knight, remember the idea is not just to move the knight back, but also to hit the bishop. But you can go bishop to e3 or bishop g3 and, you know, keep that pressure. And remember, there's an absolutely juicy, beautiful outpost on c6 where you can go bam to the queen, bam to the bishop, and all the queen side is kept under lock and key. That's the way to play it to win. White played knight d4, seeing that square immediately, but it's a little bit less accurate because now after bishop to d7, well, you can still play f4 and kick the, the knight away, but here is where black could have been really sneaky and try to play a move like queen b6. Saying that if I take, you take me, I take you, and then it's the pin, and that's what we do. So, rather than going into this and falling for the trap, and I just played bishop f4, developing the bishop. Now we're starting to see the black is starting to wriggle out of this, starting that a computer, it's starting to show white has a rating of 3,500, or even higher than the numbers 3,000 from Harry Potter's Quidditch broomstick. Well, it turns out that there was a snitch in this game, and we're going to find out soon who it was. Black played a move, rook to c8. I would have gone rook to e8, but okay, this is the computer, and the computer, like, understands things way beyond my human realm. Like, I just go on the feeling, I just use the intuition of, yeah, I have a feeling this is kind of alright. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when you have a crush on some girl, and you're like, yeah, it sort of feels right. That's kind of what I do with my chess as well. In any case, game went bishop to f3. Ooh, that's a great move. That shows a very deep understanding of chess. The reason is that, you know, I've often said many times, you've got to respect the bishops. You've got to respect the bishops. But after knight takes f3, queen takes f3. I mean, look at those bishops. Like, this one stuck baby seeing the pawn. This one stuck baby seeing c6. And, well, I mean, baby says they just don't get paid a whole lot of money. I mean, unless you're like, you know, super, you know, super nanny or something. Then, you know, you get a good gig with TV show and life is great. But otherwise, yeah, not going to be your way to, uh, you know, the billion dollar valuation which might seem like a random comment, but it'll all make sense by the end. It's all going to weave together nicely. Do make sure to subscribe as well to weave together some nice moves in your own game as well. And also there are going to be some points where you will get to make some lovely comments, like after Queen B6. Now, here's a, a question. Like, comment below. What would you play as white? Would you take that knight on E5? Or would you do something else? This is a really tough puzzle. This is one that even some of the best players in the world managed to get wrong. Let's see if you can do better with white to play. Okay, that was your cue to pause the video if you need more time or to not pause the video if you like. Max, just show me the solution. Like, I'm just here to be entertained and see whether the computer overlords are, you know, enslaved us all to be work pushing like the 9 to 5, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, as such. You know, trying to say, oh, I can always harvest more humans later, right? Uh, but anyway, the engine says that bishop e5, this is a move played by Anand, but it was not the best move. Yes, you are getting a second pawn, but look at that bishop. That bishop can come to c5, and ooh, that's, uh, that's a nasty pin right there. You know, rook is coming in, and you know, black's got some compensation for the pawn, I mean, compensation for the pawn. Uh, so instead of bishop e5, rather than having two extra pawns and giving black compensation, I prefer personally, with, of course, the wisdom of our engine overlords telling me this, that the move a3 is a much better move. Why a3? Well, the nice thing about a3 is you're making some luft for the king because 
you know, you want to make sure that you have that square available for when they try to back rank mate you 20 moves from now. Uh, in any case, if they do play like, you know, Rook to E8 or whatever, well, now Bishop B5 works a lot better. You know, you can take and that look for the king means that you just don't really care about Bishop B5. You know, you just go captures, captures, and Knight C2 and just keep a good grip over them. D4 square with C3. And, you know, you're just going to be laughing at this point, saying, Ha, ah, computer, you thought that we were just beginners, that we we're just going to fall for all your cheap tactical tricks. But now nah, we got the big brain. We learned from the best, you know, like Stockfish and Komodo and Alpha Zero. We all learned from you. <clears throat> but instead of this, we have the move. Bishop takes e5. And, oh, you got to respect the bishops. you got to respect the bishops. So I would have played Rook takes e5 and Knight c2 and, you know, just try to consolidate. Black has compensation, but it's not like Black has, you know, super martial compensation. It's kind of like a poor man's martial gambit as such, which is not that great. Uh, so I played knight c6. He tried to be sneakier and try to put the knight in a beautiful outpost. But the thing with one thing is outpost that, you know, humans like us humans, we sort of think, yeah, that knight is so beautiful. And we just admire this noble steed because we really value chivalry in chess. And Anand definitely you know, is the world champion, not just in chess in the past, but also the world champion in chivalry, we might add. I know even better than Paul Morphy and Adolf Anderson and all these guys. But now Bishop C5, you know, we don't have to take that knight. We can say, yeah, your knight looks pretty, but it's not really doing much. You know, all about the utility, all about the fu function. This is what played like Don Maynard Keynes in. You know, he's a commissary. We'll talk about the utility and the value, opportunity costs. That's what chess is really all about when you break it down with the computers. In any case, why well, played him move queen at e2. You know, he wanted to try and get the rook in the game, get the queen developed. If you want to, you could play rook e2, but I don't think it changes all that much. I'd be reticent to take on e5 because then you're kind of opening up your king and, you know... When you have one less pawn around the king, you never know when the computer's going to go some wee wee and suddenly the tactics are coming and you just lost all out of nowhere. And it's like, you cheated! It's like, no I didn't, I'm the computer. I'm just making the moves that, you know, that my operator tells me to. In any case, the game saw queen to e2, and we're going to find out soon, like, who was the operator and who was the master, who was the slave and who was the king. It's all going to be revealed soon. Do make sure to subscribe to the channel to find out about more of these great chess mysteries. Unlock the Grandmaster secrets to win more and more of your chess games. Two videos a day, guys, remember. So we had Rook F8. And now instead of playing the move Queen F1 and, you know, trying to get the Rook away from the Queen, which of course takes some nerves of steel because, you know, Black can take. And after Bishop D4, yeah, that sort of could end up with the Irish pawns. And, you know, no one wants to be caught dead with the Irish pawns. Unless, of course, you're Irish, you know, then in our case, it's fine. Which, for one reason, I'm a grandmaster, because, you know, with my 25% Irish descent, it allows me to appreciate the value of the doubled pawns and the Irish pawns and see their incredible strength. But instead, we had the move knight takes e5, and, ooh, here's where we got some big tactics. Ooh, this computer really showing its genius. Rook takes e5. Ooh, did you see that coming? Look at all checks and captures. If you look away for one second, boom, they hit you when you're not looking. So we had rook take, twin takes e5, bishop takes f2. Ooh, king f1, getting that king in the center. Great idea. Bishop takes e1 was played. White took back with the queen because he realized that, you know, after rook e8, you want to be able to go queen f2, trade off the queens, and convert that extra pawn to win the end game. So the computer says, what end game? I'm not going to allow an end game. I'm the computer, and I call the shots around here. I am the boss. So he played the move b4. Hitting that pawn, hitting that knight, forcing open some lines. And now we see after a takes b4 and queen takes b4, this bishop is already getting a little look in, trying to get at that king. But white's got the knight covering it, so the game's not over yet. White now played a kind of funny move. He tried to be a little multitasker, saying, Well, I could take on a6, or I could defend the pawn on b2, or I could hedge my bet, so I put a little option in that stock market and play the move rook a2, where I defend the pawn, and I also go after this guy at the same time. Where it's like, yeah, I'm hedging my bets. You know, if one goes down, I'm still winning on the other. Yeah, we're all good here, folks. Oh, this stretching is really hurting. I should have done more of my yoga classes. But I think that the better move for White would have been to just play Rook B1. Just keep the Rook for a defensive function. It does require you to swallow your pride a little bit. But since Anand is the most humble chess grandmaster, maybe the most humble chess player of all time, well, I think this would not have been that difficult a task if he had not been psyched out by his opponent doing these weird computer moves, throwing him off the scent. So we had Rook A2. Uh, by the way, Rook A6, not 
a very smart idea. Because after a queen b2, you're not just losing the pawn, but you're losing this guy afterwards. And yeah, that white king is starting to feel the draft. Uh, so after rook a2, we had bishop b5, trying to get in that way. Uh, I mean, you could play queen f4 as well, try to attack on the king side. I mean, it's a move that, practically speaking, would be quite strong to you know, shift the focus to the weak king. But okay, he says, you know what, I'm happy to try to trade off the knight for the bishop, the bishop for the knight, because the knight's kind of a good defender. Now, if I was white, you know, I would, of course, you know, would not be, like, using the computer during the game. You know, I have, I do have high standards, like, I'm not going to disrespect the legend in such a way. But in that case, like, with the wisdom, I would have gone king g1. And I think Anand plays because he saw that, yeah, bishop c4, pretty nasty move. That, you know, if you play rook a1, you're losing the pawn with queen b4, and, you know, this is, uh, well, you're basically living on a prayer with this past d pawn. But if you play b3 and try to cover it, unfortunately, they go bishop b5. And, well, because of the fact the queen is now undefended, you would lose the knight. And, yeah, that's not really what we want to do. You don't want to sacrifice a horse for the kingdom. You want to sacrifice the kingdom for a horse. Uh, so the game went knight e2. Quite logical move. And this is where the computer made a mistake. Can you believe it? I mean, yeah, it's true. He did throw the game for the first four or five moves, like with e5 and his kind of, you know, uh, retty Ross rubbish. But, okay, this is where Black had a much better move than the way he played. Can you play better than the computer? Let's see if you're up to the task. Black to play. What are you looking at me for? I'm not going to give away the answer. Ah, uh, take that back. I'm going to give away the answer because you could have paused the video. And, well, if you hadn't paused by now, you probably weren't going to later after more of a pause. So, in the game, Black played Queen to d6. Ooh, I think that was a mouse slip. You know, it's sort of even the computer's mouse slip these days. I guess they picked up some bad habits from us carbon-based beings, right? Uh, but instead, Black could have played Bishop takes e2. Beautiful move. After the move, Bishop takes e2. You know, Queen e2, Rook e8, and ooh, that's uh, some nasty stuff going on. You know, queen d3 runs into Queen e1, mate. But if Queen f2, you've got Queen c4, and that fork is... Ooh, loose pieces drop off. You're going to win the, the rook after that. Uh, so white would have to play bishop takes. But then black's going to say, you're going to think I'm going to take back the queen, take back my pawn, have a nice solid draw with the engine. nuh -uh, not this way. Queen f4, hitting the king, hitting the pawn. If you go queen to g1, the rook comes in the attack decisively. Rook on the back rank. The money's coming in. We're raking it like the James gang. If they play queen f2 instead, though, then black has queen to c1. You can't cover everything. You go one there, I hit there. You go there, I hit there. You're always in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Yeah, you could take h2 as well. Would also be good. But yeah, let's take c2. Then we take d5, like rook a6, knight d5. And yeah, look at this. I mean, the rook is coming in. We're going to have the pin. We're going to have the win. The bishop's a goner. And that's all over, folks. But instead of playing this and doing, and you know, just getting the win... Black said, you know what, let's try to show that I'm not a computer. Let's show that I'm a human, that I do have feelings, that my feelings do matter after all. And so he played the move queen to d6, hitting this pawn and hitting this guy over here. Remember, there is a veil, like these guys don't know who they are in reality. They think they know, but they don't really know. It's all like hidden in, all in secret, like part of the game, part of the code. So I played the move king to g1, oh, and you Defend the wrong pawn, because once this pawn goes, like, you've got that rook on the 7 franc, you've got the money in the bank, you know, look at all that cash just waiting to be picked up by a budding entrepreneur, get that billion dollars start up right down. So, in any case, now being the rook c2, it kind of gives, like, the seed money that he needs, but if you do play the move b3 and be a bit more obstinate here, well, it's kind of nice, you can go c4, try to put the blot on that bishop right there, but black can also do some tricks as well. He can play the move knight takes d5, because if c4, you've got an id3 check to be a little bit of a harasser. But after bishop takes d5, instead we had now bishop takes e2. And it's really interesting. So I think that Anand is definitely strong enough to be able to hold the draw here. You know, h6, run the king to safety. And, you know, you've got a fortress. And we all know that Anand does believe very strongly in fortresses. In this case, with good reason. Though if you're playing Magnus Castle, it can be a bit hard to keep that fortress. Not really Anand's fault. Castle is the world's best player after all. But instead, we had to move king g1 and, oh, rook takes c2. I mean, look at the energy of black's pieces. Like, they're all ready to go. Like, energize bunnies. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's run, 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 run. Let's run and don't stop until we find allies. In any case, we can see amazing energy. I think now they say, like, you got red bull instead of energizer bunny because people prefer Duracell. I don't know. But anyway, the game went knight to c3. 
black played bishop to d7. Really powerful, quiet move saying, I'm not going to give you counterplay with takes and rook a8. I'm just going to keep my bishop because, well, you've got to have some sort of religion. Otherwise, how are we going to keep the plebs in line? Okay, I'm just joking. Like, don't, I don't hate me for that. Uh, so we had to move queen to e3. And uh, after queen e3, now we have a really great move by black here. So what is the answer? Well, let's see if you can come up with it. It's a very, very difficult move. If you find this, you probably cheated. No, I'm kidding. Like, it is possible to find if you're... Ch nah, I'm not going to press it anymore. But okay, it's a very tough move. And the very best move for black is surprisingly not a move like g6 and just improving the position, which would be the grandmasterly approach to the position. But a computer has got even beyond the GM title. It has the Super Silicon Grandmaster title, and it came up with the move Bishop to g4. And at first thought, it was like, what? You're just blundering? Like, are you trying to lose the game? Like, what's going on here? What's the story? But there are some tricks. Now, if you don't take the bishop, black's going to remove that defender. The queen's going to slide in. The rook's going to slide in. And white's going to have too much territory and not enough defenders. That's what happens when you overextend with the pawns. Like, that's why Ulf Anson didn't want to push his pawns, because you never know when you're going to want to be able to move them back. But you can't. Or if they even just get taken like this, it's even worse. But okay, after bishop g4, so it seems like, at first glance, the computer made a big, big blunder. Queen to e8, king to h7. Queen e4, and look at that, we just won the house! We got the knight, we got the rook, we got, oh wait, queen g6 defense, everything. But what, he didn't play queen g6? Wait, really? He didn't play queen to g6 and just go for, you know, the draw in the end game? Really? What did he do instead? He played g g6? Okay, so what's the idea of g6? If you take the rook, seems quite tempting, but queen takes h2, king f1, and unfortunately knight e3 is going to win the queen with an annoying knight fork. That's the easy part. Now for the hard part, what about queen takes g4, the move that Vichy Arnon played here. Well, then you get hit with queen to c5. We see the power of the queen and rook in attacking that baron king. King f1 runs into queen f2 checkmate. That's why it goes king h1. And here is where we have the big cash out. So we have rook to c1. And then after knight d1, it is slumdog billionaire time. Queen takes d5, hitting the rook, hitting the knight. And at this point, you know, there were only 15 seconds on the clock for black. White could have played some moves, like just gone flag, h3, king h2, do a dirty flag. It's what I would have done. I have no apologies for that. I flag happily every time. It's how I win my games against players who just try to play solid, make a draw from move one, or try to insult me with my free e5. He's got a dirty flag, these players. But instead, Anand showed why he is the most gracious, the most noble, the most kind, the most witty, the most erring good chess player of all time. Because he realized that he was beat on the position, and he resigned in his charity symbol. And as a result, the cash came flooding in. So how cool was that, having this sort of charity event? So it turns out the charity was not the humans being harvested to be used by the machines like in the Matrix. But actually, it was a different charity event, but a checkmate against COVID. Well, COVID got checkmated, but Anand didn't get checkmated because he resigned first. Okay, so what's the answer to the mystery? What is the answer? So here's the story that you've all been wanting to hear, and you've been begging for it. Like, tell us, Max, give us the answer. Who is behind the computer? What's going on? What's the scandal? Here's the answer. I'm getting into gossip. I blame you guys. You brought me down to this level. I'm joking, of course. But anyway, the answer is that the player playing black, well, he was operating a computer, but his real name was Nikhil Kamaf. Nikhil Kamaf, the India's youngest billionaire. Good on you. You're awesome for getting that billionaire. But you cheated in a chess game. Like, really? Come on. Come on. You're playing Anand. Coolest guy in the world. And you decide not to play a real game. Or, I mean, if a real game, we played 1e5 and, like, blundered this, uh, this pawn or something. Like, I don't know what that, that was all about. Trying to throw him off the same Like, yeah, it can't be a cheat. Cheat wouldn't play this rubbish first move in the opening. But yeah, that's uh, that's the story that we have the first... Is he the first ever like billionaire chess cheat? I don't know, but I mean, it's not like I'm getting in trouble for saying this because he did admit himself on Twitter that he used the computer in this game. I mean, I'm just like, ching, like, it's like one reason I stopped playing competitive chess. Like, this is what would happen. Like, I would go and I would like play some tournament. I'd work really hard, do my like eight hours a day, 12 hours a day of chess study, you know, do a little bit of exercise, get some relaxation, like do my high performance stuff. And then what would happen is like, I would play like, I'd play like some cheat or something and I'd end up like losing like an idiot or like they're just cheating away that they managed to basically 
keep the position equal the whole way through and it ends up being a draw. It's like very demotivating like to play these games like you gain all these points and you play some cheat and you lost all the points you gained for that reason. Very, very frustrating. Very, very annoying. It's one of the reasons I stopped playing. There are a lot of others as well, but it definitely was a big shift in me going from loving playing chess like, yeah, let's play 24-7 like a complete addict to like, nah, I don't really feel like some chess so much. Let's, you know, do some YouTube videos instead or whatever. In any case, that's pretty much what I have to say about the game of an arm against the computer. Hope you love the story. Hope you love the video. Do make sure to smash that like button so I know to make more videos like this one. Also, make sure to comment below what was the fun part about this video for you. Like, what was your response to seeing India's youngest ever billionaire cheat against Vishu Yanan? Are you outraged? Are you like, what the heck just happened? Like, what's your response? Let us know down below. And subscribe to Illingworth Chess for more Grandmaster Chess videos that make you a better chess player and put a big smile on your face along the way. So I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, good luck in dealing with our new computer overlords.